Hello again, just bringing you another comedy ode from my own abode. Uh, I've gone inside for this one, uh, as should all of you. That's the rules. So this poem is for anyone who believes that the life of a touring comic is one of glamour and or luxury. I hope this will assure you that is very much not the case. This is uh, an all too real story from a trip that I made to Australia a few years ago. And this one is called Hostel. Michael Palin used to make it look so glam on TV, but I'm failing in comparisons between him and me as I take the middle seat on an economy flight to a destination taking one whole day and a night nestled in between a lady with incontinent traits and a man who looms so large it's like he's eaten all his mates as if his coughs and sneezes aren't interminably grating his cacophonous night wheezing makes it sound like he's deflating Perth was the first stop on Australian soil, the chief exports of which are gold, mullets and oil, where you have to look twice at the price of a beer for the same in southern Spain. You get pissed for a year, so the options for my lodgings, they were limited for sure. Should I pay for a hotel and come back poorer than before, or pack my dignity away for a while and choose a backpacker's hostel that was cheaper by a mile? In my teenage years, I often wondered how you could tell what was the difference between a hostel and a hotel. Now a few years on, I understand it a bit. They put the S in the middle so you know that it's shit. So I'm in the shower block around a quarter to four. Or as it seemed to be, they used a Lastaplast store, trying to wash away my jet lag in a trickling stream, whose only settings are Mount Etna or as cold as ice cream. When a curious noise emerges from the silence before, a kind of buzzing that is coming from the shower next door. My imagination frames this as a backpacker chick, having fun with what we used to call a selfie stick. So this fantasy continues till my logic corrects that the shower block I'm standing in is not mixed sex. Now, you can take the one you love to a Parisian hotel, have a bubble bath with champagne, eating oysters from a shell, but you've never known true intimacy till you've had the treat of seeing a stream of strangers' ball hair flowing right across your feet. And the shearing didn't cease, in fact it carried on hard. He could have made a winter fleece from all the hair he discarded. And I gather that this gentleman, let's call him Sean, must have started like the guys you see in 70s porn. Surely now he's hairless as the day he was born, with a scrotum scrape the colour of an ominous dawn. Soon my friend would reach the end of his bush plucker trial. The shavings washed away to block each drain for a mile. Now some of you may wonder how I got my facts straight in this story from down under with my shower block mate. My claim that it was ball hair may not settle very well, for unless I had been in there, how the hell could I tell? My very first hunch came from the southerly hum, plus two distinct grunts as he moved from plum to plum. And did we ever meet? No, I didn't stick around to see if ball hair in Australia washed the other way down. A month of hostile life allowed me never to forget that when it comes to foreign lodgings, you pay for what you get. <laughs>